Here's a fun headline. Male birth control study nixed after men can't handle side effects women face daily. Oh, men are such precious little babies, aren't they? Can't even handle a little acne or hypertension or suicidal depression. Hold on, that's actually quite bad, isn't it? Let's be clear. The side effects reported in the discontinued study on male birth control that you've probably seen floating around Facebook, those are absolutely comparable to what women go through on a daily basis today using hormonal birth control. And the side effects reported in that study are nowhere near as severe as what women originally had to go through back in the 1950s when the pill was first approved for use. Back then, women were regularly dying of blood, blood clots and strokes and ovarian cancer and heart attacks. It was pretty bad. Of course, the pill is much safer now, but the side effects are still bad enough that at least one survey found that up to 39% of women quit taking it in the first year. And you can compare that to 3% of Norplant users and 13% of IUD users. So if women have been putting up with this shit every day for the past 70 years, why can't men? Great question. For a start, men can put up with that shit. In the aforementioned halted study, more than 87% of the male subjects reported that they would actually like to continue taking the birth control despite the side effects. So it wasn't whiny men who stopped the study. It was concerned scientists. And those science scientists didn't stop the study because they didn't think the men could handle the side effects. They stopped the study because they were seeing new and more dramatic side effects than what they had previously seen in smaller studies leading up to this. You see, back in the 1950s, when the female birth control pill was approved, standards were much, much, much lower for pushing pharmaceuticals to market. Today, things are better and fewer people die thanks to this kind of careful research. So let's imagine that you're testing a drug and at first you test it on 20 people and you find that 18 of them get acne, two get an increase in libido, and one experiences mood swings. So next you test it out on 200 people and you find that 180 get acne, 20 get an increase in libido, and you would expect 10 to get mood swings, but 80 get mood swings and three try to kill themselves. That's kind of what happened here. Uh, this was a stage two trial and the side effects were way worse than what they had seen in the first stage. And as a bonus, a lot of those side effects originated from one particular medical center, meaning that there's a chance that somebody there was screwing things up. And in a case like that, yeah, it's a really good idea to stop what you're doing and reevaluate. And by the way, this study did have three reported cases of severe depression. I've seen a number of commenters online claiming that the study led to a suicide, but that's not necessarily true. According to the researchers, one subject reported serious depression that was found to be probably related to the injection. Another subject uh, attempted to overdose on paracetamol, and that was found to possibly be related to the injection. And one final subject actually did commit suicide, but that suicide was investigated and was found to be completely unrelated to the injection, which he had received one month prior to his suicide. So no, in general, the study didn't show that the injection was any worse than the current hormonal birth control options for women, but that doesn't mean that men can't handle the same risks as women. All you're seeing is the evolution and improvement of the scientific process. And with luck, pharmaceutical companies will continue to safely explore male birth control options since many men today are actively voicing a strong interest in it. In fact, I wonder if the male birth control injection might be the final end result of all of those men's rights activists who are claiming that women are constantly trying to sperm jack them. So, hooray?